It is currently the 28th of December. I haven't recorded for a while because I've been on a bit of a, we like to call it my sabbatical, sabbatical. Um, I've been visiting family for the holidays and getting some other things in order. But I'm back in North Dakota for a couple of weeks before I go down to California to help my dad with planting potatoes. So right now we're moving grain around, we're getting things cleaned up, just kind of getting ready for the new year, um, getting organized or at least trying to. So I'll just show you what we've been up to and hope you enjoy. There's something messed up with this auger. They just fixed the chain at the top, but they're pretty sure it's something in the gearbox. We're always having gearbox issues with these, so we're just gonna switch augers out. And then there's only a little bit left to scoop out in here, have sunflowers. Been sweeping necessities, especially with these sunflowers are pretty dusty. This summer I did not wear a mask a lot when I was sleeping bins. Sunflower bins, normally they don't get super dusty. Um, but you just always want to wear a mask because all the dust sits in your lungs and turns into a not good situation. Ay, ay, ay. I think I need some new boots. unloading the rest of that truck. I'm gonna go hook up to that auger that was broken this morning and bring that back to the farm. <sighs> bring that back to the farm and then they'll probably fix that hopefully before the mechanic leaves for his trip and then uh, they'll pull that auger out of the bin and we'll be good to go. Ah, is it clean? Hopefully it's clean enough. So we've taken about, I think this that was our fifth load out. Probably have like four more, maybe. I'm really bad at guessing how much is left. Halfway done, six truckloads. The grain always likes to pile up right there, right there, and right there. There's little spots that the auger kicks it out, so. That's where we gotta scoop the most, is those big piles, and then the grain will fall down. And then you gotta scoop it some more, and sometimes you just watch it, because there's nothing you can really do. When it's all falling on the other side of the auger. Just got done with truck number six. Two of the trucks are pulling doubles or pups um, and then there's a triple axle so I'm not sure how much is going into each truck. They're going by the legal limit and we only have hopefully like three or four more trucks and it is 11:45. We started at 8 ish like 8 30 probably we started loading. So I got the mask evidence. Last little bit, and then we're all done. All right, all done, doors closed, pulling it over there.
while we are done in the bin that we had to sweep, I'm going to go back to the farm. We need more masks in the uh, scale house because we're out. So I can't forget to tell Matt that. I might go pick some up today, actually. It's two. It's like three, basically. So we started at eight, ended at three. You got nine or ten trucks out of that sweep. And we were going to do bag extracting today, but the sun came out and it makes everything undesirably sticky. So um, we try to stay out of the field when we know it's going to be muddy because we do not till. Um, at least we try to avoid it. And then hopefully we'll get some extracting done this week and I can show you guys that. So this has been pushed on the back burner for a while. Now they're actually at the field loading up hay that we, that I swapped and then the boys baled and raked and then I stacked the bales and then we hit it with the high speed John Deere disc. So I'll show you guys that. Another thing looking around that you'll notice is that there is not a lot of snow on the ground. It is January 3rd or 4th and normally the typical amount of snow that they have on the ground is much more than this. Sometimes you just have much more mild winters, um, but this is a severely mild winter. It's a little colder this week than it has been in the past, but this is still very unusual. And then this field that we're in is a new braking, like I said, with that high speed disc. So it looks pretty good. We'll seed into this in the spring and this will be another field added to the rotation. When I stacked those bales, I was so conscious and I don't know if conscious is the word, but I was concerned about the direction I was stacking them because I didn't know which way was best. Craig just told me stack them whatever way works best for the trucks to pull in and out. Um, so I don't know if stacking east-west is the best or if stacking north-south is the best. I'm pretty sure that a lot of other people stack their bales north-south. Um, but then again, it just depends on the field, the location. Most of the time it doesn't even matter which direction you're stacking it. But this field looks good. I was planning on doing more of like a journey of the breaking ground, but that just didn't work out like I thought it would. Um, but this is broken up. I got to be part of a lot of managing this stuff, so that was fun this summer. It was kind of like my little baby. Um, I got to swath it and it's still rough, but I got to swath it the boys bailed and raked it. I got to stack the bales. It was fun and now it's disc and I'll get to show you guys in the spring when we see that and I can't remember what we're putting in that but I guess we'll find out. So
that's a little bit of a look into what bag extracting looks like without as much detail as I could provide. Um, when they come to an end of the bag or they go to the beginning of a bag, that's kind of more where we can explain about how the extraction process works other than just watching it, but that's really all there is to it. Um, when you close and open a bag, that is a little different, but that's all the changes. So tomorrow, Tristan said we're going to switch to sunflowers and I'll probably be at the bin site unless plans change, but with right now being how it is, Matt is in the cleaning shed and then all the other guys are trucking or helping in the field. So um, I'll probably be at the bin site helping with the auger just because that makes things a little bit easier and flow a little bit faster. So another thing that's going on, we have bag extraction. Um, what else did I show you guys today? Hay hauling. And then the cleaning center um, behind me is getting a facelift. So Matt and Dennis are on that. Matt is the grain cart driver from this fall. Dennis drives combine and they both have like their brains just work together really well and they've created something really cool in there that I'll show you guys when I understand it a little bit more. It is very cold today. Matt came and stabbed the bin because I never like doing that. Um, now we just got to make sure that it loads the bin in the center um, and it is cold. Holy moly. That wheat bag that I showed you guys yesterday is currently being emptied. They're going to finish that load off with a load out of this bin. So I'm going to hook the tractor up and then Ross is going to finish that load. Then the boys will be here with sunflowers and it's gonna work perfect. So I think they said the elevator is gonna be full of wheat by tonight. So we're just putting sunflowers in the bin. a successful toe stubbing. It's hooked up. And as soon as I get back in the pickup to wait, they text me and say, no loads out of the bin. They're just gonna send that load out of the bag to the elevator. So now I get to put the tractor away and unhook the PTO, Ugh, which makes me cry every time. But this one really isn't bad. This PTO is not sticky. Some of them, very difficult. Look at how cute and little it is. I even took the cover off. Oh my goodness. Ah. Now I get to go sit in the scale house and wait for the boys to get here with sunflowers. Because that's what's next on the agenda for this site. Oh, it's cold! <laughs> it is just about lunchtime. All three of the trucks showed up at the same time, almost. And I'll probably be here for the rest of the day unloading these guys because uh, it's kind of difficult to unload the pups with that auger system. Unloading pups in general can just turn into a pain in the butt, so. Um, yeah. You gotta weigh them in, weigh them out. Make sure their pup isn't all, you know, getting the auger swung under that pup is uh, just how it goes. Two, five, two, zero. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll be doing all day. Matt also told me to make sure that that um, 
pile is centered. So, Doug closed the door and said it was good. I'll probably double check it now because I don't trust him just because it's nice to have two sets of eyes on mostly everything that goes on around here. So, after Ross is done unloading, I'll make sure that that is good to go. And three truckloads, they hauled a total of 210,940 pounds. So, that's with two pups and a triple axle with a back hopper. That's pretty good. That moves a lot of grain really quickly. I don't know how well you can uh, see that, but the moisture probe came off. That's lovely. Um, that should be pretty centered. It looks like it's more towards the uh, front of the bin. Since that pile looks like it's too far forward and that moisture probe came out, Matt's gonna come look at it just to make sure, determine whether we need to back it up or not because he has a lot more experience with that. Um, and I'd prefer to have someone double check it. Not that it's always efficient to have everyone double check everything all the time, but with grain bin stuff, I always get that double check. This might be the last load of the day. Um, it's like 3.30, I think, but the sun goes down in about 45 minutes, so it's gonna get dark pretty quick, especially with it being cloudy. Um, so I guess we'll see when Doug gets back with his next load. But either way, they probably won't load at the bag again, other than Ross. Because by the time Ross gets back here, well, gets to the bag and Doug gets back here, it's gonna be dark. And then by the time Doug gets back out there, it's gonna be dark. And loading in the dark and cold just is not fun, not efficient, not really smart. So other people do it, we don't. Since we are done for the day, we always put this up at night, um, just because you never know. Oh my goodness, it's too short. Ugh. I have to, it won't go in the hole. <sighs> we put that up at night so it doesn't get ruined. You never know with weather, everything. Ouch. Okay, if that doesn't work, I don't know what will. If it doesn't go in, I'm gonna be mad! I should not be running in hate dudes. Let's see. Moment of truth. Now it's too long and it's probably gonna fall out. Ugh. Now it's too long. Ah. Back into the office. I think it goes that way. Oh, it does. Hallelujah. Okay. It just goes up and up and up. And then we're gonna shut this bad boy off. Whew. And put the oil. I suppose some of you may appreciate this. It's a 75C Challenger tractor, cat. Um, it's it's an oldie. She likes to, the steering wheel, if you nudge it at all in the winter when it's cold, the wheels will just shift slowly. So that's something we have to look out for with having the auger set up on it because the tractor will start shifting. That obviously moves the auger. So, whew, it is so cold. Since we're all finished up, here is a little peek at what they've been doing at the cleaning center. They got their tubing outside, hooked up to the bins. That's gonna be slick. <laughs> 